adamandbeliever.com forward slash creator three. When you have it, say amen. All right. All right, and let me, let me say this right quick, because if I get one more message of somebody saying, look at them and I don't see no Bibles in the audience. I got, I'm sick of it. You know, it's two things I'm sick of folks saying. About the Bible and this Apple on my computer. So I'm going to deal with both of them right now. Because they make me sick. Whoever's saying that, yeah, I'm talking to you. Get that on tape. This apple. This, this, this is the apple in the Garden of Eden. There's a lot of things wrong with that. First of all, did the Bible say it was an apple? I'm glad we got some smart people in here. Second of all, if it was the exact fruit... That was in Eden. I ain't biting it. I'm using this computer, bro. I'm using the other side of it. I'm not using the back. This apple came from Sir Isaac Newton. If you know anything about Sir Isaac Newton, he's the one that was instrumental in discovering gravity. And the apple fell on his head. And so when Steve Jobs and uh, Greg Wozniak were creating the Apple computer, they wanted to use the symbol of an Apple because of Sir Isaac Newton. Their first Palm Pilot was called the Newton. This is just, just for your information. When they first drew it, they said it looked too much like a tomato. So if we take a bite out of it, people don't bite tomatoes. They bite apples. That's why the bite came. Thank you. Folks just, I mean, some folks won't, won't watch the videos because of the apple. Oh, it's just blinding my eyes. Now, let me get on this Bibles. Okay, so we, you know, we don't, people don't see Bibles in your hand. They don't understand that I do something even better than the old church with the Bibles. I provide the scripture, scriptures in order as they occur in the sermon so that you, and then I give you the PDF so you can do what? You can take it home and have your own Bible study with it. It's just a little more advanced. And you got the Bible on your phone. You got the PDF. You got the, I mean, why would we waste time waiting on you to find it in here? You need to practice Bible drill at home. We're trying to move this along. But here's my answer to the apple and the, and the phone. Turn it off. Brother, it's, there's a gazillion preachers on the Internet Turn it off. They act like there's nothing outside of ABC, and I ain't never said that. I mean, when they leave here, they talk about it for years. Who does that? Who leaves the church and keeps talking about it? Man, we famous. Y'all, we, what? What's going on in here? Where folk can't let it go, ever. And they worried about it. I mean, worried about it like they in here. We got to get y'all out because y'all don't have Bibles in there. Y'all can't be in there. They don't say that about no other church. This dude's up preaching about nothing but money. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Somebody told me I threw up the devil sign in one of my videos. And sent me a clip of it. Sent me, sent me a clip of me throwing up the devil and rebuking me for throwing up the devil. See, brother, you ain't real. You false because you, you're, you're a false prophet because you throw up the devil. It's a big video I was talking and I did like this. And they slowed it down and it looked like I was. <laughs> I was like, boy. You can't get a break. 
I said, okay, man, all right, all right. So I, I said, how would the devil, how do you think the devil feel about me? Like Jesus told you a house divided against itself can't stand. Said that Satan can't cast out Satan. So if I'm preaching, if I'm throwing up the devil's side and then preaching against him, I'm spiritually schizophrenic. I was like, brother, what? I mean, what? You going to tell me that I'm doing it? Brother, I caught you. <laughs> oh, but you're talking to me. Like, can I tell you that I didn't? I mean, I just know what I saw. <laughs> brother, why do you hate me? What did I do to you? Man, why don't you turn on somebody else? Turn on somebody with no hands. <laughs> then you can't catch them. <laughs> my goodness why won't they leave me alone man I'm out here trying to go to heaven preach the gospel I'm just out here trying to live for Jesus what is wrong with these folks God is great and should be praised how God is great and should be praised how greatly this is not just for church services, but we should lift our hands, how often? Daily in reverence, his greatness. Listen, every, there should not be a day that goes by that you don't lift your hands and reverence the God of creation. Every single day. That was good, Pierre. That, that, he watched Pierre. He did it. Every day, when you wake up in the morning, when you on your way to, to, to clean your face or whatever you're doing, you ought to lift your hands up and just thank God. Your presence deserves this. Amen. Amen. Don't wait till you get in trouble and fall in the alley. Oh, ah, you just going. No, every day, especially because he's provided a good day for you. When the day is good, you, your hands should go up automatically. Every day. He's great. So this is not just for Sundays, but this should be daily. You should reverence his greatness with the raising of your hands. Psalms 111 and 1. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my what? Whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Wherever you are, there ought to be a praise in your heart. And when you get the chance, you ought to lift your hands to the God of all gods. Amen? Now, you ain't trying to prove a point, so don't wait till the boss is yelling at you. Oh! <laughs> don't get fired. Because that's the devil. The devil is, is the one that fires. <laughs> So don't you go try to go in on a sinner. Amen. But in your private time when you're alone. Amen. You don't have to be the super. You know, I used to teach that in the supermarket. Get the bucket in the, down the aisle. And I don't, don't do that. Amen. Because I'm not going to vouch for you when you give them my phone number. Amen. We're not, we, we ain't going crazy in the supermarket. Knocking all the cans over. But... When you're in your house, when you're in your private time, you ought, there ought to be a surrender where you know God is so great. There's no way I can let this day go by and I have not lifted my hands to him because I know you're going to ask him for something and I know you're going to need him for something. And I know you're going to want him to do something. So in advance... You ought to lift your hands. Amen? He is worthy of our praise because of how great he is. Not just for what he's done or what we expect him to do. We're not boxing him into, I'm going to praise you for what you've done or I'm going to praise you because I need you to do something. No, because of who he is, he deserves it. Amen? He's great, powerful. He's a creator of all. So he's worthy of our praise just because. Look at somebody say, just because. Just because we name his name, it ought to be surrounded with our praise. Amen? Psalms 18 and 3. I will call upon the Lord who is what? Worthy to be praised. 
so shall I be saved from my enemies. We must be careful not to express our unhappiness with ourselves and our lives in God's presence. You don't wake up feeling bad because you don't have something, something bad happened or whatever, and you get in God's presence and forget how great he is. Amen. Just because you're feeling down, that's when you ought to give him praise. Because you know you're going to need him to feel better. So don't let the grind of the day take away from what you owe him. Amen. Or they might not be a grind. Don't express your unhappiness with yourself in his presence. He deserves the praise. Just because he is creator of all things, we owe him our reverence and our praise. No matter how you're feeling about yourself, do better. And pray and ask God, how do I make things better? But I got to come before God recognizing who he is. Can't take away from him because I'm feeling a way about me. Are y'all listening to me? You're going to look at somebody and say, you're going to need him. In this end times, you're going to need him. The, the, the preaching is going to help you, but that's not enough. You're going to need him personally to make it through these end times. Psalm 16 and 11 Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is what? In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So your joy and pleasure is in his presence. So when you come before him, no matter how you're feeling, let his presence bring you joy. Amen. Amen. If you leave the presence of God feeling like you felt before you came in, then you didn't get in the presence of God. The Bible just told you in his presence is fullness of joy. So if you leave his presence with no joy, that wasn't his presence. Oh, I can't get amens on this part. Yeah, I don't know whose presence you was in. You was in the presence of your own pity. That's what you were. And that's okay, we human, so you went to God and you thought you were talking to God, but you were really talking to yourself and feeling bad about things because the pres in, the pre in the presence of God is fullness of joy. So when you truly get in his presence, you ought to leave it joyous, different. You don't have to clap, that don't offend me, amen. I see you. Many times, our disdain for our earthly authorities can affect the way we view God's greatness. You know, I'm going to stay on this father thing and this authority thing and this leadership thing because I just believe some folks are going to miss heaven because they're mad at somebody. Yeah, you're not going to heaven if you have that in your heart. Jesus is not coming back for you with that in your heart. Because in God's eyes, if you don't respect your earthly authorities, you don't respect him. See, folk don't, folk don't like this part, but I'm going oh, to put it in that. Every creator message. Because that's our example. That's how we exemplify how we trust and love him. We, sh we first learn that or show that with our earthly authorities. So you can be mad at your daddy and then praying to the heavenly father you hate your earthly father. You got to go fix that. Can I keep preaching in here? Yeah. So many times our disdain for our earthly authorities can affect the way we view God's greatness. When we carry contempt for the authorities in our lives, we may downplay the importance of exalting the creator. You can't lift your hands because your heart blocks them. 
there's something in your heart that blocks you from lifting your hands. You can't get in God's presence and reverence him because something is in your heart that shouldn't be. Amen. You tried to. You used to. But after a while, you just start really feeling, you know what? This is pointless because I don't feel nothing. So I'm going to stop doing it. But you, you weren't feeling anything because there was something blocking. Some contempt in your heart for someone or against someone. And eventually it wore down and it won the battle. And now you come during praise and worship and you sit with your arms folded. Or you just stand there and stare. We're exalting the great one, creator of all things. The one that put breath in your lungs, the one that put food on your table, the one that's sustaining your life right now. And when we're worshiping and talking about him, the contempt in your heart blocks you. And he's sick of it. Every hand should be lifted. Every heart should be open. Why not? How dare you? But soon as something happens, Jesus. First Peter 5 and 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace. To who? He giveth grace to who? By grace ye are saved. <laughs> By grace you're saved. But he gives grace to who? By grace you're saved. But you get grace by being what? Humble. He started this passage off with submit yourself. Younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, your authorities. And if you do that, he'll give you grace. Because he gives grace to the who? The person that can humble themselves to their authorities. Man, on that great and terrible day, that's going to be weeping and wailing. Because these sermons are going to be ringing in folks' ears. They won't be able to turn them off. What the little freckle-faced preacher said, they won't be able to shut it off. They already got to drink and smoke and all of that now to drown it out. But when Jesus comes, contempt your heart because we feel certain issues with our earthly leadership our prideful posture causes us to be starch and unyielding during our praise and worship to God let me say that again we feel certain issues with our earthly leadership you feel something against your father you feel something against the pastor you feel something against your earthly leadership and so it causes your posture to be prideful which makes you starch and unyielding you can't break free you can't get to that next level of his presence there's a wall there and God didn't build it that wall is in your heart and you're unyielding during praise and worship I know I'm preaching. I'm going to let that marinate for a second. Second Chronicles 30 and 8. Now be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but what? Yield yourselves unto the Lord. Enter into his sanctuary, which he hath sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away. See, because if wrath is in your heart, you're going to experience his wrath. If 
He said he's going to forgive your trespasses if you forgive your brother's trespasses. But if you don't forgive your brother's trespasses, he's not forgiving yours. Thank you, whoever that was behind this train that's coming at me. <laughs> Light. <laughs> Amen. Folks don't like this kind of, oh, but the grace is going to cover it. No, you get grace if you're humble. Yeah, why folks trying to live under grace but don't obey under grace? Why are you trying to live under grace but not live for Jesus? The grace is his. That means you got to live for him to get it. That's why they just become Hebrew Israelite now, so they can just go on and get from under Jesus. We'll just, we'll just get, bring the law back and obey the laws to get in. I hope thou shalt not cuss ain't one of the laws, or thou shalt skip child support. Y'all all disqualified. <laughs> Lifting our hands and crying out to God is hindered by our tough, unrelenting disposition how did you get so hard how did you get that hard you can't even move when the worship is going forth that's in your heart you can't lift your hands because you mad at somebody and it manifests when you get in here you can't worship God the devil's got something on you You know if you lift your hands and go to worship and your Sunday night plans might get canceled. Oh, I know I just preached then. Uh-huh, I felt that. Uh-huh. Coming here with some old wicked plans for later. But why did you come? Like God don't see everything. Oh, two people clapping. Thank you, Sister Athena. Clap, girl. Amen. Because we refuse to submit. No, no. Yeah. Because we refuse to submit, obey, and yield to our earthly authorities, we stand haughty before the greatness of God. How do you stand haughty in God's presence? Now, listen. Let me show you. Let's just do some deductive reasoning here. So you come here. Do you believe the presence of God is here at ABC? Okay. Would you be here if it wasn't? Okay, so we got that straight. So you do believe, but when do you believe the presence comes? During the preaching or the music? Or does it skip over the music and come just during the preaching? Or does it come during the altar prayer when I pray or when I pray after the preaching? When, when does it come? Or is it here the whole time? It's here the whole time because you supposedly brought it with you. Right? Okay, so if you believe the presence of God is here. Now we got that straight. Y'all believe the presence of God is here? Okay, so I had to ask again. You believe the presence of God is here. So when we're doing praise and worship and talking about his greatness, why are you not participating? I mean, we're in the end times, like, waiting on the sky. We are waiting on a miraculous event. The sky to open up. And Jesus to come get us. Y'all, that's miraculous. You can't lift your hands. You can't yell out in the presence of God and thank him for what he's done or what he's going to do or who he is. What is wrong with you? That's not cool. That's insulting. He deserves more. Do y'all believe he deserves more? Wait, wait, wait. Would you have anything if it wasn't for him? God will get his honor from us one way or another. Either we yield in his presence and honor those he sends to us to warn and teach us. 
or he will allow the cares of this life to break us down before him. Oh, that's happened to some of us. I know it. I can testify. I know what that feels like. You start hearing that voice, lift your hands. You start hearing that voice, give me some praise. You start hearing it, worship me. Something happened, and I'm not talking about in here. I'm just talking about you just out. Something happened, and you hear that voice. Get on your knees, pray. Hear that voice, you get the Bible, read. And you'll start hearing it, and you'll hear it for a few weeks, a few months, and then all of a sudden, the bottom falls out. You start going back trying to get that voice again. <laughs> Man, I'm reading everybody because that, that happens. I'm telling you, it happens to us all. You'll hear it, and if you ignore it, yeah, you better get them. When you hear him say, get them hands up, he's not telling you, just to do it right now, he's telling you, you're going to do it one way or another. That's what he's saying. He's God so he can see your future. He looked at Peter and told him, Peter, Satan has just petitioned the father to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. He saw that before it happened. What Peter should have done right then was fell on his face and said, God, no. No, don't let it happen. I humble myself right now. But Peter was the one like, well, no, he must not be talking about me because I'm the one that will take a spear for him. Oh, but the Bible tells us Jesus comes walking up to the beach and Peter is there buck naked around a fire. That means he done lost his mind. And he sees Jesus. And at that moment, it's all worship and praise. When it could have been earlier when he got the warning. <laughs> Amen. So when you get the warning, the Bible said the day you hear my voice, do what? Harden not your heart. Proverbs 29 and 23, a man's pride shall bring him where? Low, but honor shall uphold the what? Humble in spirit. The only thing standing between us and calamity is the power of God. You need to think about that. The only thing standing between you and trouble is the power of God. Them witches would have took you out a long time ago. Them devils would have stopped you a long time. The only reason you're here right now is the power of God. <laughs> when you come in here, this is the time you praise him for drawing that line for you. And keeping you safe from your enemies. That's, this is the time you praise him for that. You honor him for that. When we ignore that our creator is worthy of our excitement, we cause humiliation to fall upon us. So if you ignore the fact that he's worthy of your excitement, because that's what praise is supposed to be. Excitement. You're not lifting your hands just because you're in church. You should lift them because you're excited. I've seen folks, amen. I've seen folks just in here while the praise and worship is going on. And then get in the football game. <laughs> Touchdown! I'd be like, what? Because that's excitement. You're excited about folks you don't know can't pay none of your bills and can't stop you. They can't get themselves out of trouble. But the God that... The God 
that fights for you day and night. Send his angels to war for you while you sleep. Protect your house. Protect your money. Look at somebody and say, he's worthy of the praise. He's not just worthy of your praise. He's worthy of your excitement. You ought to be excited about it. The author and the finisher of our faith. Matthew 23 and 12, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, but he that shall humble himself, that's humbling when you forget about yourself and what folks going to think about how you look when you are giving him praise. That's humbling. And those are the ones that God exalts. The greatness of God will not be disrespected by man. He's not going to allow it. You will not disrespect his greatness. He ain't going to let you talk about him in secret and whisper about him in crowds. No, he's going to make the day come where you're going to have to boldly declare it. The Bible said every knee shall bow and every tongue shall what? So the greatness of God is not going to be disrespected by some old raggedy man. Who are you? Some old man? Created being? Really? You think this is about you and how you look in front of others? There is always a price to pay when our only protection from falling is ignored and not given our highest praise and adoration. There's a price to pay when our only protection from falling is ignored. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. That's your only protection from losing your mind. The only protection. So there's a price to pay when you ignore him and not give him your highest praise and adoration. Because you know what he does? Wherever you put in your highest praise and adoration, he'll take it away. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Wherever you put in it, wherever you're putting your greatest adoration and exhortation, your love, your time, wherever you are trying to sow it other than God, he's going to take it. Because you're not going to name his name and not call his name. You don't get to do You don't have to listen to me. You can run and try to hide, but it's too late now. You done heard it. You're responsible for it now. Yeah. He, he's going to take it. Psalms 121 and 2. My help cometh from who? My help cometh from who? The Lord. Which Lord? The one who made heaven and earth. The only true one. That's where my help comes from. Summary. God is uncreated, so he deserves our praise. I mean, an uncreated being deserves some awe. You can't give it all to Magneto and the Hulk, and you in awe at all the DC characters, and oh, Abomination, look at him, he's 
Ooh, Wonder Woman. Why are you looking at all this magic and foolishness? You all your are going to that. You had every movie, every premiere to, to just awe at some magic CG computer graphics. Just the thought of if it whoa, if it could be real. Well, where did they get all them stories from? The Bible. The Bible. God did it for real. He did it for real. He didn't need CG. He didn't need CG to part the Red Sea. He didn't need CG to make them nine plagues happen in Egypt. He didn't need CG to create man in his image and in his likeness. He didn't need CG to fly Elijah in the fiery chariot in the heavens. He didn't need CG to confuse the languages of the Tower of Babel. Look at somebody and say, God don't need computer graphics. And he's not going to need CG when Jesus cracks the sky. And the dead in Christ are going to rise. And we that are alive and remain are going to be what? Caught up to meet him in the clouds. Look at somebody and say, he's worthy of the praise. God is uncreated, so he deserves our praise. God is everlasting, so he deserves what? Our praise. God is almighty, so he deserves what? Our praise. God is Alpha and Omega, beginning and ending, so he deserves what? Our praise. We should thank him in Jesus' name. We should honor him in Jesus' name. Every knee should bow and tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the honor and glory of God the Father. How can we withhold our praise that is due his great name? How can we arrogantly feel we can be in the midst of his moving and not recognize that we are encountering greatness? Who are we to stand in his presence? Who are we to remain silent during worship and fail to recite lyrics that extol him? Are we great? Are we powerful? Will it take God allowing the devourer to rob us of things to bring us to our knees? Does it take him allowing the devil to touch our flesh? Or affect our finances in order to get the glory he deserves from us. For those of us that name the name of God and are called unto him as sons and daughters. We have a responsibility to praise his name. We will call upon the name of the Lord. Whether it be out of our own joy or our pain. It's best. Look at somebody say it's best. It's best to willingly give him the praise he deserves now and forevermore. Look at somebody and say, he deserves the praise. He deserves the praise. Psalms 34 and 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall what? Continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall bear thereof and be what? It takes a humbling. <laughs> oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from what? <laughs> All my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were what? They didn't care who was watching. 
This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him what? Out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and did what? And delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that shall seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Everyone stand to your feet. How many of you know he's worthy to be praised? Come on, PJ. How many of you know he's worthy to be praised? I mean, we, instead of us having an end, ending prayer like we always have, let's just have an ending praise. How about that? How about that? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands up and just give him the praise that he deserves from you. Think about all that he's done. Think about, don't think about what he's done. Think about what you need him for. He's the sustainer of life. He's the sustainer of your breath. The sustainer of your health. The sustainer of your finances. The dis he's the sustainer of us. Without him, we can't make it. He's taken your fear away. He's assured you that things will be okay. He's promised you that if you serve him, no harm is going to come nigh. These are his promises. He's worthy of our praise. So let's praise him now and just lift him up. Don't think about anyone but him. His greatness. How powerful he is. Hallelujah. God, we forget about our cares. We forget about what we want to happen. We forget about the things we feel we need. Right now, we're forgetting everything. And we're just remembering the one that holds our future, sustains our life. It's not about what I don't have. It's about what you have for me. So, Father God, we just worship you right now. In spirit and in truth. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for electing to bring me to this place this morning to give you the praise and honor and exhortation that you deserve. You deserve it. There's no one like you. No one like you. No one like you. No one. Like you. No one my praise to you should be different from my excitement about football. My excitement for you should be different from my excitement about shopping. My excitement for you should be different because you are different. Those things don't matter, but you matter. Those things aren't important, but you are important. Those things are temporal, but you are forever. You are everlasting to everlasting. You deserve my praise you deserve it so forgive us Lord for putting it somewhere else forgive me for being more excited about other things you are worthy of all of my highest excitement the highest level you are worthy so we praise you God we glorify you we lift you up we trust in you. We believe in you. We hope in you. God, we depend on you. We rest in you. We trust in you. Hallelujah. No matter what the world is doing, no matter what they're saying, no matter what they're threatening, no matter what they're planning, it doesn't matter. 
our faith, our trust, our hope is in you. And we know you will see us through. God of all gods, King of all kings, and the name that is above every name. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Be exalted forever. Be exalted forever more. Be exalted forever. Lord in our midst, be exalted forever. Come on, one more time, real loud, lift it up. Be exalted. Yeah. In our lives be exalted one more time be exalted be exalted forever you Jesus be exalted forever oh. come on somebody give them praise